that is called amla pitta um, amla in sanskrit means uh, it is the sour taste pitta is the we can say it is digestive fire so the quantitative and qualitative increase of uh, gastric juice and its subsequent symptoms on the digestive tract that is dealing with the amla pitta disease so it is uh, mentioned it is nowhere you can find it anywhere in the classics of uh, uh, ashtanga hridaya or charaka samhita and susruta samhita it is referred in a um, the reference you can find only in madhava nidana a text which is written centuries later in the 7th century after the classical text has written so next before going to the amla pitta the disease we have to for the better understanding we have to have a uh, like an a brief knowledge about the digestive system the what are the parts of the digestive system and its uh, uh, how it functions uh, both in ayurvedic way and in the how the modern science describes it what is um, human digestive system that is a it is a complex system of serially connected organs that means it is a complex system of almost 8 to 9 meter long and uh, uh, the, yeah it extends from the previous slide please can i have yeah it extends from mouth to anus and it is almost 8 to 9 meter long and it has attached lot of secretory other organs are attached it with it extends from mouth to anus and uh, uh, it works with the help of then it is a tube like organ it works with the uh, uh, secretory glands and uh, other secretory glands and it controls the passage processing absorption and elimination of all whatever the ingested material so it starts from the mouth the mouth has apart from this tube the mouth has three pairs of salivary glands that has secretion that secretes saliva and that has enzymes that that helps in the processing of digestion then the then it extends to the esophagus it is a almost 10 inch a uh, long tube that uh, with its wave like action that helps the passage of the ingested or swallowed material into the stomach so in stomach also stomach walls produces uh, gastric juice the major part of the digestion happens in stomach and the stomach wall the epithelial cells on the stomach wall secretes gastric juices that helps in further digestion of the protein the starch and then after the major digestion happens then it step by step it it passes the half digested or uh, semi digested material into the small intestine there with the help of uh, the um, enzymes uh, from the liver they are the sec- that is what it is it works with the attached secretory glands so with the uh liver that is the largest gland in our body uh with the enzymes of the liver further that the, the digestion and the pancreas the digestion process completes then uh, the next is the step of in the small intestine and the large intestine the absorption and elimination of the absorption of the nutrients then in the large intestine elimination of the waste products happen this is the very brief outline of the digestion process so the complex system of serially connected organs which ex- extends from the mouth to the anus which is almost 8 meter in length and together with its secretory glands controls the passage processing absorption and elimination of all the ingested materials so this is the modern view of the digestion now when uh, it comes to the oral cavity that is the mouth what happens in the mouth because in the oral cavity both 
लाइक मैकेनिकल डाइजेशन एंड केमिकल डाइजेशन हैपेंस मैकेनिकल डाइजेशन इज बाय चूइंग चूइंग द फूड नॉर्मली इन द आयुर्वेदिक ईटिंग गाइडलाइंस वी रेकमेंड चू योर फूड प्रॉपरली द द साइंस बिहाइंड चूइंग इज this one mechanical digestion it breaks down the whatever the ingested food it breaks down into small particles to a uniform consistency uh, more than that it mixes the mechanical uh, the chewing um, helps uh, to mix the food particles with the saliva it regulates the ph uh, the uh, uh, ph of the food and um, uh, it makes it to a uniform consistency it moistens moreover the saliva oh, next the previous slide the saliva contains two digestive enzymes yes this the saliva contains two digestive enzymes they are called salivary amylase and lingual lipase which is produced by the tongue the salivary so the carbohydrate digestion start from the mouth itself by the salivary amylase the starch particles or the carbohydrate in our food the food mainly contains carbohydrate which provides energy the protein the building material of the body uh uh and the fat the main component of food uh, food whatever we eat are classified into three carbohydrate protein and fat so the carbohydrate the larger part of the uh, our food the digestion of the carbohydrate the starchy material starts from the mouth itself it is a very important point as far as ayurveda is considered because we recommend sit in a proper position the food should be pleasant the chew properly all this is for the better functioning of the salivary glands and the nerves controlling the saliva for the better production of the saliva can i have the previous slide please yeah so, uh, and the the proper pro digestion of the carbohydrate proper beginning of the carbohydrate digestion and the lingual lipase that uh, starts the breakdown of the fat material whatever we eat so once the digestion uh, in the mouth is proper it is easy for the stomach to digest it further but if you do not chew it properly if you swallow it the burden on the stomach will increase so the uh, the uh, chance for undigestion or the produ production of toxic material because of the undigested residue in the stomach is more now after swallowing our control is over then everything will happen involuntarily involuntary so next is esophagus that is a 24 25 cm or 10 inch long tube which it connects from the mouth to the stomach so there is not much digestion happens in the esophagus what happens it is just act, act like a food pipe with its wave like movement it pushes the bolus of food towards the stomach that wave like movement is called peristalsis so it a controlled uh, passage we can say a controlled movement a wave like movement it pushes the bolus of food towards the stomach now next slide please next slide next slide next slide can i have yeah next to what happens in the stomach here the large part of digestion occurs here and the food stays here for almost more than 1 to 2 hours it stays there and it is highly acidic the secretion the gastric juices are highly acidic the the ph of the gastric juice almost varies between 1 to 2 that is if uh, that is a hot acid which can burn your skin that much acidic it is so what happens in the stomach is there is the chemical digestion with the help of gastric juices the juices are pepsin plus hydrochloric acid with a ph of 2 and main uh, the large part of protein and the remaining part of carbohydrate and fat digestion of protein happens in the stomach and the partially digested material is called chyme 
This passes to the small intestine by the step-by-step -step action of the pyloric sphincter. It is a small part it exits from the stomach to the small intestine because small intestine is a uh, small tube. So it can't accommodate this much of food at a time. So part by part, like step by step, it uh, there is a sphincter, there is a valve like valve like uh, uh, exit uh, mechanism is there. It is called a pyloric sphincter. It step by step action of the pyloric sphincter, it goes to the small intestine. So actually, for the gas, uh, for the uh, gastritis and the gastroesophageal disease. We must understand. We must have a brief idea about the the digestion through the stomach because the main pathology of the uh, gastritis and gastroesophageal reflux disorder happens in the stomach. So now in the small intestine, further digestion happens. Then uh, its absorption of the nutrient nutrients. Uh, occurs in the uh, small intestine from the uh, large intestine mainly elimination the fecal matter uh, a waste products it stores then uh, when it is full it expels it out that is happening and in the stomach then the chemical digestion it is facilitated by the mechanical action of the stomach that is the churning action the, uh, the peristaltic movement or the wave like movement that helps to mix the food particles with the uh, gastric juice. So note that this is the highly acidic environment, which uh, in Ayurveda it denotes, uh, it is the Agni fire, our digestive fire. The seat of the digestive fire, Jadara Agni is the stomach. So that has a lot of similarity, seat of Pachakapitta or um, uh, uh, that has a lot of similarity with the pitta, that is a fiery water, like a, uh, which is responsible for all the uh, digestive process in Ayurveda. So this has a lot of similarities with the, our uh, digestive process in Ayurveda. So once again, in the stomach, the gastric juice, which has a pH of 2, which is highly acidic, which can even burn uh, the skin, uh, the digestion is facilitated by the gastric juices and the churning action of the stomach. And here the partially digested material called kayam, it is passed to the small intestine by step-by-step -step action of the pyloric sphincter. So if any impairment in digestion causes the stasis of this partially indigested material in the stomach, that can lead to the toxic material according to Ayurveda. Now, next slide. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah. So now we got a brief idea about the uh, parts of the digestive system, the anatomy of the digestive system, and the physiology of the digestive system till the stomach. How the digestion happens right away? It starts from the mouth, uh, from the mouth to um, uh, to enzymes, salivary amylase and salivary lipase that helps the digestion of carbohydrate and uh, uh, the fat. Then it passes to the stomach through the esophagus, wave-like action of the esophagus. And the major part of digestion happens in the stomach with a highly fiery gastric juice. Uh, the protein digestion almost uh, uh, happens there. Then the partially digestive material. And now we have to know, who controls this? Because once it's allowed, we don't have any control over this. Everything happens involuntarily. So who controls this? You know, uh, uh, here comes the importance of uh, the stress, uh, uh, the physical, the importance of stress and our mental condition on digestion. Because, look, please, the previous, yeah. Our gut has an independent, nervous system throughout the wall of the gut throughout the wall of the gastrointestinal tract in the in the inside the walls there is a separate nervous system called enteric nervous system that is a subdivision of autonomous nervous system that is we don't have any control over that it works independently but even though it is a subdivision of the autonomous nervous system which originates from the brain it can work independently without the control of this autonomous nervous system. So 
our gut is also called as second brain this second brain produces the you might be heard about the serotonin hormone which controls our mood which is responsible for uh, happiness uh, uh, mood you can say mood regulating hormone it is largely produced by the enteric nervous system that is the second brain that is the brain of the gut so uh, then um, that is also responsible for the peristaltic movement uh, um, and uh, uh, one more the vagus nerve which originates from the brain stem that is that also has some control over the gastrointestinal tract so these together that subdivision of autonomous nervous system the vagus nerve and the enteric nervous system that is our gut has separate nervous system in the walls of the um, uh, gastrointestinal tract uh, that uh, uh, has its own secretion the happy hormone serotonin uh, it has peristaltic movement all this wave like movement everything is controlled by the enteric nervous system even without the help of vagus nerve also they can function they they can function independently that is what so uh, this is what the stress the mental condition our mental condition has a direct impact on the um, gastrointestinal tract or the food uh, uh, our digestion and the food whatever we eat that has a direct impact on our mental health that is what this this, this all modern knowledge and there is um, a separate division of branch i think uh, neuroendrology now a separate branch is there which uh, they, which uh, uh, study which uh, research on the enteric nervous system their role uh, so gut is the second brain so one more uh, as ayurveda says listen to the gut for a better health what gut says if you feel uh, hungry you eat so uh, it has direct control over our food has direct control over the mind and mind has control over the digestive process that is the connection so the, the picture says uh, that um, vagus nerve which uh, which comes from the brain that has control over the um uh, our inter visceral organs then uh, the the tube like organ inside its wall uh, this enter millions of neurons you can find the neurotransmitters you can find the ganglia uh, all the parts of the nervous system you can find inside this epithelial inside the wall of the gut so next slide please next slide and i have the next slide yeah so now what uh, the ancient saints says about the digestion the way the ancient saints were looking at the human physiology is quite very far different from the modern perspective but nowadays uh, with the advanced knowledge in the science they are proving it that is i told you this enteric nervous system gut brain everything with the advanced knowledge it has a lot of similarities with whatever our uh, saints uh, written thousands of years back so um, the digestive tract in the ayurvedic anatomy it is um, uh, mentioned as kosha it is a tube like organ uh, uh, in the uh, inside the body which has attached organs that is kostanga nistida nishu all the other uh, of visceral organs all the other main organs uh, visceral organs are attached to this tube that is what it is a serially connected uh, uh, complex system with its attached secretory gland same like kosta it is a long tube with its connected organs now it is a brief description only you can find in the uh, ayurvedic anatomy it is kosha so now uh, what happens in the oral cavity before we going to the oral cavity and digestion uh, we have to know about the three vital forces uh, that helps in maintaining the health of the uh, uh, body according to ayurveda they are vata pitta and kapha 
vada is the uh, vada you can uh, correlate with um, a cold wind uh, 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 which has um, air and either as a uh, buddha uh, component uh, which is uh, for the beginners it is better to understand uh, like it 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 controls and coordinate the body functions like our nervous system it is it controls the the factor which is responsible for the control and coordination of the all the body activities is called vada the force behind the unseen for, force behind all the activities of the uh, uh, functions whether it is voluntary or involuntary is the uh, uh, we can take as vada dosha so vada in its healthy states control all the uh, uh, con in vada in its healthy state uh, in the balanced state vada in its balanced state control and coordinate all the body activities now the next vital force is pitta pitta we can uh, all the transformative force all the metabolic activities all the digestive process pitta we can say it has component of fire and the previous slide please yeah the pitta has some uh, component of fire and water you can say an acid it is like an acid and it it causes the pitta is responsible for all the transformative force like uh, digestion digestion changes food into the nutrients and the waste products same like in the tissue level you can find metabolism uh, the hormones everything comes under this pitta activities of pitta so it is responsible for the growth or the transformative uh, processes or the metabolical or the chemical and biochemical activities of the body uh, is the uh, function of balanced or healthy pitta dosha now the kapha that you, we can say a framework or the mucus or the all the solid part we can take as kapha or the mucus production maintenance lubrication which comes under the kapha dosha so these are the three vital forces that uh, in the balanced state it is responsible for the health of a person and in the imbalanced state it causes the diseases in the every part every micro level in the cell level in the molecular level uh, uh, you can find the involvement of this dosha so I, again i am telling for the beginners uh, this philosophy is little difficult but but you will get it with the uh, uh, yeah so what happens in the oral cavity the oral cavity and uh, the oral cavity the the vada responsible for the function of the head and its related organs is called prana vayu and uh, vada, uh, the kapha responsible uh, situated in the uh, uh, tongue it is called bodhaka kapha there are divisions for this uh, doshas there are five divisions five major divisions so the prana vayu and the bodhaka kapha helps in the digestion of the ingested material in the mouth that is bodhaka kapha it is taste sensation and prana vayu that helps the secretion of the uh, saliva uh, and prana vayu will help till swallowing till that process it help, the prana vayu is responsible for that and after that the main can i have the next slide please yeah the next yeah so the main vata dosha which which controls and coordinate the activity of the entire digestive tract from the esophagus to the anus till uh, the small intestine is samana vayu that is that we can say like it may be the enteric nervous system functions it has lot of similarities with the functions of enteric nervous system so the force behind according to ayurveda the force behind the digestion from the esophagus to the small intestine is the samana vayu so many of uh, why i am mentioning this is many of us the, uh, the acid reflux disease and um, whatever gastritis we say it is a pitta disorder 
but there is an involvement of vata dosha so as a physician if you are practicing ayurveda we have to keep in mind the vata here too is imbalanced so we have to uh, uh, make it uh, first we have to balance uh, it has equal importance like uh, balancing pitta dosha it has equal importance for the vata dosha we have to give equal importance to the vata dosha for balancing the vata dosha too so here the stomach or amasya the main force uh, the main controlling and coordinating force is the samana vayu if that is deranged the control even the pachaka pitta is in the balanced state the control if the control is gone if the vata is imbalanced that can also cause the regurgitation normally in the gastrointestinal tract the vata's uh, uh, direction of movement is downwards from the mouth till the anus vata should uh, vata should uh, move in the di- uh, downward direction in a controlled manner so if the vata is imbalanced that will lead to the regurgitation that will lose the control of the emptying of the stomach so it will stay inside the the, un, the half digested material can stay inside the stomach and it can produce ama so the dosha also in the gastrointestinal tract now the main so samana vayu what is samana vayu so samana vayu is located near jadaragni that is the digestive fire it controls or move around the entire digestive system controls coordinate the passage digestion assimilation and elimination of ingested food so now uh, the next factor responsible for the main digestion is pachaka pitta that is a division of the pitta which is the which is the important or the which is the base for the digestive fire so the pachaka pitta is the main force and that is it 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 uh, its location is almost uh, between the large intestine and the stomach and it is very predominant the dominant the dominant the dominant dosha the do, dominant element is fire so and it is responsible for all the changes that is a uh, uh, processing or the digestion of the food and uh, it digests the food and it divides into uh, uh, the nutrients and the waste products and uh, also that is responsible for the uh, function of all other pittas in the body that is all other that, that means the digestive fire the pitta um, the pitta in the digestive fire is is the key factor for the healthiness of all other transformative forces in the body that is tatrastha meva pittanam sheshanam all other pittas all other metabolic activities all other chemical biochemical all the hormonal activities in the body it is response the pitta pachaka pitta the digestive fire the main component of the digestive fire the pachaka pitta is responsible for all other transformative or the all other forces all other changes or metabolic activities in the body so if this one is impaired gradually all other tissue level metabolism all other micro level metabolism as well hormonal activities everything will impair so in ayurveda can i have the next slide please yeah yeah so it is located between the amasya maybe small intestine and amasya in the stomach it is high in the fire element that you remember the digestive uh, the gastric juice in the stomach has a ph of 2 same it is the pachaka pitta has high in fire element so it is also called agni agni means that is the agni in sanskrit means fire so pachaka pitta is also called as fire because of its high uh, fire element and that is responsible for the digestion and elimination of food assimilation of food and its function it it is responsible or that is the key factor all f- f- function of the remaining four pittas depends on pachaka pitta so if this pachaka pitta is imbalanced it will it is going to affect 
or other transformative forces in the body. Now, the factor responsible in the stomach, for, factor responsible for digestion in the stomach is Kledaga kapha. Kledaga kapha, that is the mucus that protects the wall of Amasya from the acidic environment and it helps in moistens, moistens and lubricating the ingested food. So, the physiology of uh, digestion according to Ayurveda, it starts from the mouth. In the mouth, it is responsible, the pranavada prana and the bodhaga kapha. Then, uh, the involuntary processes is controlled by Samana Vayu, remember Vada has a key role in this. Then Pachaka Pitta, that is the digestive fire, that is the gastric juice, that is responsible for, for all other metabolic changes. And uh, the Kledaka Kapha. Kledaka Kapha has very less uh, role in this. This just lubricates, moistens, and it just uh, protects from the fiery water, the wall of the stomach, it protects. So now the gender acne. I sorry, sorry. Yeah. So Ayurveda has a concept of gender acne. What is gender acne? The main. Uh, what is first of all? So we have to before going to the gender acne, we have to understand what is agni. Agni in the Sanskrit it is called fire. So. But in the Sanskrit, as far as Ayurveda is considered, Agni denotes a wide range of processes for body, body metabolism. A wide range of processes that is responsible for transformation of one substance to another. Do you know the, uh, what is the feature of Agni? Agni, if we put something in Agni, it burns. It burns and it transforms into another. It purifies or it... it it, 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 will, it will transform whatever if we put in Agni, it will transform it into another thing that is ashes or evaporates, uh, it's volatile things evaporates. Same like Agni is responsible for all the transformation of one substance to another, includes the digestive fire. What here, what does digestive fire do? They transform the food into nutrients and waste products and all metabolism that also uh, it, it, that causes a change in the activity change all the hormonal activities growth all chemical and biochemical reactions of the body the, the the factor responsible or the key factor responsible for all the transformation in the body is called agni so on the physical level so all these agnis, all this all this chemical, biochemical, all activities are controlled by the digestive fire. If digestive fire impaired, subsequently all this transformation will gradually impair. Not in a day. This will not happen in a day. So apart from that, in addition to that, if the digestive fire is impaired accumulation of undigested toxins in the stomach that is also uh, that also produce the key factor for the disease and on the physical level though, so the digestive fire here is called the jadaracne so the digestive fire has the jadaracne has a key role in in a, in, in in body health so on the physical level, digestion is the single most important determinant of good health because quality of digestion is directly related to ability of the body to build quality healthy tissues. So all other agnis, all other transformative forces according to Ayurveda is, depends on the healthiness of digestive fire. A balanced, a proper digestive fire is required for all other healthy activities of the body. But it, it, it does, this impaired digestive doesn't cause any disease in a day, but with the accumulated toxins and uh, uh, other transformative forces, it may gradually go to the tissue level. It may gradually imbalance the other doshas, it may grow, gradually move to other tissues and may produce disease. So. Can you hear the next year? So what is the Amla Pitta? 
നമ്മളെ പിടുത്ത ആസ് ഐ ടോൾഡ് യു ഇറ്റ് യു കാൻ നോട്ട് ഫൈൻഡ് എനി റെഫറൻസ് അബൌട്ട് യു കാൻ ഫൈൻഡ് ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് റെഫറൻസ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ഇൻഡൈജഷൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് മെന്റൽ ഫാക്ടേഴ്സ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് റിലേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് ഇൻഡൈജഷൻ ഇൻ ദ ഓൾഡർ ക്ലാസിക്സ് ദ മെയിൻ ക്ലാസിക്കൽ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് വാട്ട് വി ഫോളോ ആർ അഷ്ടാംഗ ഹൃദയ ചരക സംഹിത ആൻഡ് സുശ്രുത സംഹിത വിച്ച് ഇസ് റിട്ടേൺ ഇൻ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് സെഞ്ചുറി ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഓർ ഫസ്റ്റ് തൗസൻഡ്സ് ഓഫ് യേഴ്സ് ബാക്ക് you cannot find a disease like amla pitta in any of that but lot of indigestion related uh, uh, topics you can find so this amla pitta is uh, uh, mentioned in a text called madhava nidana which is written in the 7th century that is maybe in older people they are following a healthy diet and also they may not those days amla pitta or not prom- not um, this popular and gradually when people uh, started a dietary or uh, maybe there is a chance but um, amla pitta the reference about amla pitta you can find in madhava nidana so what is this amla pitta it it is a variety of ailments resulting from the production of gastric juice which has acidity higher than normal in concentration and quantity so any disease which is related with the um, Uh, uh impaired function of the gastric juice it comes under amla pitta it may be gastroesophageal reflux disorder or it may be gastritis gastroesophageal reflux disorder is the the uh, the undigested the half digested uh, uh, food food mixed with the gastric juice it regurgitates into the esophagus that is the gastroesophageal reflux disorder gastritis means it is the inflammation and the erosion or uh, uh, of the uh, stomach wall due to uh, uh, high acidic content if left untreated all this causes uh, maybe gastric ulcer it can cause or duodenal ulcer or uh, in the very advanced state and in very rarely even uh carcinoma or so many health issues and uh, more than that it uh, uh, impairs the digestion and absorption of the nutrients so gradually it uh, it uh, affects the health of the body too because the if the absorption of the nutrients is impaired means body will not get enough uh, of nutrients so uh, any disease any disease related to the impaired production of gastric juice uh, comes under amla pitta whether it is gastroesophageal reflux disorder or gastritis so what are the causes of this um, uh, amla pitta in the madhava nidana it is uh, written as uh, viruddha amla vidahi pitta that is uh, mainly the diet the diet the diet which causes imbalance to the pachaka pitta or the digestive fire the main component of the digestion the diet which is uh, uh, causes imbalance or increased production only quantity sorry quantity is increased not the quality of the digestive fire so increased production or imbalanced production of gastric ju- juices uh, is the causative factor main causative factor for the amla pitta or gastroesophageal and gastric diseases that is food responsible for the imbalance of pitta the excess intake of sour pungent spicy oily fermented fried foods and all this junk foods uh fall and one more is faulty dietary habits uh consumption of incompatible food items that is ayurveda uh, says a lot of food combinations that uh, milk and sour food sh- should not go together um all this faulty uh, in- incompatible food items then excess use of alcohol excess use of kami- caffeine uh the diet that is uh, uh Uh, this fast food habit uh, junk food habits a lot of sodas uh, carbonated drinks uh, 
all these are responsible for even some of the carbonate drinks that will give you temporary temporary relief from the uh, gastritis but that is that is not going to balance the pitta that is not going to balance the digestive fire that is not going to balance the uh, vata which controls the movement of the uh, digestive tract so it may give you temporary relief but it will further it will lead to again health problems that is not a permanent solution for this um, uh, amla pitta or gastric diseases so the diet that is viruddha dushta amla vidahi pitta pragobi banana bujo vidagdam pittam sohetu so pitta will pitta will aggravate or pitta will get imbalance in its main seat that is the digestive fire and causes all these diseases and gradually it will causes diseases of the tissues diseases of uh, uh, other pittas too it will impair the function of other pittas too so next factor is first first one is the diet next can i have the next slide please uh, yeah next factor is psychological psychological stress physical stress mental stress job related stress strain or emotional emotional instabilities all are there so this is why i mentioned uh, the physiology of uh, digestion because gut has otherwise it will be difficult for, if i explain in only in ayurvedic term it will be difficult for the beginners so uh, psychological factors i told you uh, gut has a separate enteric system enteric uh, nervous system so any stress related and the happy hormone the serotonin or the which controls our mood is is you can see in higher concentration in the gut it is produced mainly in the epithelium in the wall of the gut so that is responsible for the peristaltic movement uh, if it is less it will cause the constipation if it is more it will cause the diarrhea so psychological factors has a direct impact on the digestive system that is poor stress management emotional instabilities work related stress or uh, physical stress any kind of stress worry anxiety anything anything may impair the uh, uh, dig digestive fire and once the digestive fire is impaired it will cause gastric diseases so it is mentioned years back written in the second century it is written in the charaka samhita that even though you consume food in the proper quantity following all the proper uh, uh, pro proper way mentioned proper quantity proper sitting proper chewing pro uh, proper to your uh, constitution even though you consume food like that it may cause in digestion or it may impair your digestive fire if you have chinda shoga bhaya krodha dukkha maha prajagrehi that is excessive mental tension chinda chinda means excessive mental, uh, mental tension shogam ex sadness bhayam anxiety krodham anger again dukkha many other disease and improper sleep ah prajagaram means uh not good night sleep so if you late sleep or um, if you cannot sleep in the night properly if you are too much anxious if you are too much sad if you are too much anger if you have a, a like a mental tension even though if you cons if you consume food in the um, following all the food guidelines it may impair the digestive fire so digestive uh, the psychological factor plays an important role in the digestion it is men it is written in the second century that is matraya pyavahradam patyam annam atnam na jeeryati chinta shoga bhaya krodha dukkha maha prajagarehi so in that case what we do is we can do meditation or uh, uh, we can do we can you in addition to uh, control the uh, gastric um, in addition to balance the uh, digestive fire 
we have to do some herbs or some meditation or shirodhara all the activities which calms the mind too so then only uh, uh, the it will the pathology or the uh, cause behind the factor behind uh, it, it, this can we can address so now it is lifestyle related it is sedentary job sitting in the computer for a long time sitting under the ac for a long time uh, sitting and watching tv for a long time Wa tv watching tv and eating if you watch tv and eat your your mental attention will be there on the tv so so that may uh, uh, that may affect the production of uh, uh, saliva that may affect uh, uh, our if the concentration is on the tv we may forget to chew or half chew or uh, and uh, that affect the whatever which control the uh, other digestive process too so lifestyle related sedentary jobs uh, i told you uh, inadequate physical exercise Uh, tendency to suppress the natural urges all this can uh, relate uh, cause uh, gas uh, this uh, gas uh, imbalance in the digestive fire then one is seasonal uh, you know pitta is the main um, key factor responsible for digestion so some uh, season and some body constitution they have a more pitta 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 aggravating factors like the summer here uh, summer ha summer has a tendency to aggravate or imbalance pitta dosha and vata dosha so in, in in those that is high heat dryness and poor digestive fire all this uh, causes pitta all all these seasonal factors uh, plays an that cause pitta aggravate uh, pitta aggravation that is some season here in the here in the us this is the summer season this is the pitta aggravating season and some some constitution some body constitution is pitta predominant that is in some people you can find pitta element more so in those people also they are more prone to this uh, impairment of digestive fire or the gastric uh, impairment of digestive fire now the iatrogenic causes are prolonged use of certain medication also causes um, uh, gastritis and some h pylori infection may causes uh, gastric infect uh, uh, this uh, uh, gastritis or uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorder and uh, some other conditions are during pregnancy you may find um, uh, Uh, you can find uh, in the later stage of pregnancy when the uterus go up and it pushes the stomach uh, you can find a gastric like a regurgitation but that is a uh, okay so uh, that is a um, temporary condition so this h pylori infection all so many other factors are the oh, i'm sorry so can i have the next slide please yeah so what are the signs and symptoms of this uh, um, uh, amla pitta it is heartburn epigastric pain anorexia abdominal distension bulging bloating chest pain headache headache because of uh, uh, w uh, improper the improper digestion the nausea vomiting heaviness in the abdomen all this this people experience uh, the symptoms so i don't want to go in detail but because of the fire element it may cause heartburn when it regurgitates when it pushes again the upward up it causes a heartburn may it causes the epigastric pain on the upper part of stomach you can feel because of the impaired digestion and accumulation of toxins you may find a, 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 a no taste sensation or not feeling hungry then abdominal distension bulging bloating chest pain all these people experience so gastric patients may approach as physician approach you with all these symptoms so can i have the next <coughs> so how to manage normally ayurveda says all the management which has an etiological factor 
avoid the etiological factors that is if it is the diet avoid which causes the aggravation of pitta or uh, avoid which causes uh, the imbalance of vata the dietary modifications or if it is stress related we have to address with the stress um so what is the causative factors just avoid that then modification of lifestyle and dietary schedule so that is custom made we do dietary schedule like uh, if it is too bad the condition is too bad we may recommend small and frequent meals then once your digestive fire is okay we can go to the uh, proper timings for the food uh, lifestyle a proper sleep a proper waking up a proper routine what to eat and the use of uh, uh, a proper lifestyle uh, proper exercise is uh, recommended and uh, dietary schedule lot of dietary modifications uh, that is we do custom made and um, use of herbs and formulas like guduji st avipattikara churna prescribed uh, the formulas uh, lot of formulas are mentioned in the classified text we use uh depends on the condition we analyze your condition uh we analyze with the dosha which dosha is predominant which is the imbalance to fat the chronicity the duration and uh, how extent it is so according to that we make formulas we create new formulas and we use formulas from the classical text the classical means uh, this written years back there are wonderful formulas for this Uh, so gudu uchi st we we use herbal decoctions uh, like gudu uchi adi kashayam that is a combination of five uh, herbs and uh, three a combination of three herbs amrutharam kashayam so many um, uh, other in powder form all uh, mainly for uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, formulas we recommend uh, we can treat the condition with uh, uh, herbal decoction and formulas and in chronic conditions we use uh, panchakarma complete detoxification like virejana uh, stress relieving technique uh, panchakarma is recommended but in the very early stage even in the text it is say like that if it is new or if it is not chronic uh, we can treat with uh, our herbs internal herbs and if it is uh, chronic we have to go to panchakarma so some of the dietary modifications uh, we recommend are eat in a quiet clean and settled atmosphere that is for the freshness of mind if mind is fresh they produce uh, enough of sal- the nervous system is uh, the if uh, in a fresh uh, fresh atmosphere means our nervous system will be active it will be uh, it will help to produce a uh, eco- a good amount of saliva which ever required it helps for the chewing and uh, the involuntary actions beyond for the better secretion of all the gastric juices and for the proper movement for the, for the proper peristaltic movement of the gut so eat in a quiet clean and settled atmosphere and if you already have uh, limit meal size like we recommend only 3 by 4th of our capacity we have to eat limit the meal size and if you have already gastritis we recommend uh, small and frequent meals not to burden the uh, uh, stomach with the heavy meals and avoid heavy meals heavy evening meals uh, so because the, dig- the dig- digestive fire is in its best condition during the afternoon lunch time so uh, evening uh, it will be diminished so it will reduce the action so Uh, we don't recommend uh, heavy evening meals for those who are having gastritis so and avoid taking a meal until the previous meal has been digested that is if you are not feeling hungry just leave you sip some herb- herbal trees or if you sip uh, hot water and just leave if you are not feeling hungry do not eat that is what ayurveda says because if the undigested food in the stomach again mix up with the fresh food again it may causes indigestion and the toxins development of toxins that is ama according to ayurveda so the food should be freshly prepared warm and pleasant that to attract the saliva the the, uh, the better production of all the gastric juices uh, the salivary uh, the saliva and the gastric juices it should be warm and pleasant 
now chew your food until it is an even consistency before swallowing chewing i told you if you if you if, if, if chewing helps in the digestion half digestion happens half a digestion of carbohydrate and pro, uh, fat uh, digestion begins in the mouth so if it properly digested in the mouth the burden on the stomach will reduce so if you do not chew again it uh, uh, stomach has to work a lot to uh, make it digest even in mechanically and chemically so avoid chilled water at any time so it is like pouring the pouring uh, if you suppose a fire is there and if you are pouring a water how what happens it will it will go so it will it will it will some fumes will be coming out so same like if if you pour uh, cold water in the if you use cold water that will uh, reduce or that will reduce the quality of the digestive fire so do not we don't recommend chilled water at any time maybe in gastroesophageal reflux disorder some cold water will give you temporary relief that is not the permanent cure for this but it is again cause uh, to add up the like uh, toxins in the digestive fire then avoid the rich desserts after meal because of the heaviness of the meal it is hard to digest take a few minutes to sit quietly after each meal avoid vigorous exercise within 1 hour after a meal then some of the lifestyle changes low weight eat over weight stop smoking decrease alcohol intake decrease caffeine cooling and digestive herbalities and the green juices like cilantro parsley celery cucumber greens all these recommended all lifestyle all lifestyle changes recommended so here are the reference uh, some ashtanga hridaya and madhava nidana so thank you <laughs> and body mind consciousness and environment are all interrelated and beautifully addressed in this eternal and universal wisdom that can prevent disease promote good quality of life threat the cause as well as the symptoms of disease while guiding you on your spiritual journey Thank you so much Dr. Rini that was fabulous. Um before I open up for question and answer session let me just say that uh, at the Institute of Ayurvedic Medicine we have courses coming up this September Ayurvedic health educator Ayurvedic nutritionist and herbalist Ayurvedic life consultant and a clinical mentorship. You can take one or all of them whether you want to improve your health or start a new career. And if you take all four of them then you qualify for the Ayurvedic health counselor certification. So that's coming up. The classes are on evenings and weekends and this coming Wednesday at 5 p.m. I will be te- uh, explaining the curriculum in detail and taking your questions. So come study with us. We also have right now every other Wednesday a free session on uh, using Ayurveda as a manual for life, and we talk about a lot of different things. Last week we talked about why we shouldn't suppress any urges, uh, natural urges, and the w- emotional urges that we should suppress and how. So. coming up the fo- not this Wednesday but the following Wednesday we will be talking about the the science of food and the six tastes that's all that that will also tie in with today's presentation again these Wednesday evening sessions are free so put put a note in the chat box if you'd like to be included in that saturdays like today's series we have specific conditions that we talk about if you've registered for the courses are you the health counselor courses then it is free otherwise it's 10 dollars and these are also we also have the recorded ones that are available and um uh, if you need access to the recorded recordings let let us know um we have coming up let me show you the slide we have coming up the following wednesday is a uh, following saturday is the ayurvedic detox by dr not dr she's an ayurvedic practitioner her name is sarah aro coms and if you've attended her lectures before she's very funny very entertaining um so you learn about how to detox at home and what it means to detox the following saturday i will talk about leaky gut 
this is the hot topic right now and this explains a lot why some of us wake up stiff why some of us have sensitivities to wheat and gluten and lactose why some of us have autoimmune conditions or can't lose weight um so leaky gut a very very important topic coming up in a few saturdays and then the final saturday uh, the first saturday in august i will be doing a cooking session a live cooking demo and if you register ahead of time then i'll give you the list cooking ingredients and we will cook together you will cook in your kitchen and we will cook in, uh, and we will have um a, a fun uh, hands-on class so that's coming up on the saturdays let's see what else i have coming up oh we do have two uh websites um let me see if i can bring that up again um Let me see if I can bring that up. Okay, so maybe I don't. Uh, so if you call me at the our phone number 7146174593 sanctuary phone number um you can register for any of these courses if you uh, most of you have access to my email or the sanctuary's email also or you can put it in the chat box okay i am going to now stop actually before i stop recording let me address one question important question from vicky does ayurveda um rebalance the h pylori um as it is i believe it is natural to the intestines dr rini would you like to address that before i yeah actually i have experience uh, those who so, two of my clients they have h pylori infection i got a, a good symptomatic relief with our herbs so after that i don't know whether they check for the h pylori but uh, in the first two appointments they got remarkable relief like all the gastric uh, related uh, um, uh, symptoms uh, it is relieved with our herbs i used uh, some classical herbs called gulucha di kashayam with uh, some musta and all uh, but she was very much pitta pitta that i told you know we have to uh, analyze your condition but uh, two of my patient one was here only uh, in sanctuary one of my uh, in the very beginning uh, uh, h pylori but after that i don't know whether they check for h pylori and all but remarkable symptomatically uh, they were perfect another question thank you dr in another question very important question what do you think about eating raw food um yeah raw food is recommended for uh, kapha constitution uh, normally we recommend cooked food only ayurveda recommend cooked food but in certain condition and in certain body constitution we recommend so i would like to add that that green juice that we mentioned briefly right at the end that would be very beneficial and that's raw with the yeah, that, cilantro and parsley and cucumber and so that, that for because it is in juice form there is not much chewing and not much uh, uh, it is already in the grinded form so our digestive system can easily digest that but uh, the salads and all we recommend for certain condition and certain body constitution we recommend but normally uh, we recommend uh, cooked food only cooked at least steamed food and then we have a question what when a person keeps clearing their throat a lot after a meal is this related to acid reflux not related to acid reflux but i think uh, some mucus mucus might be there that is some undigested toxins okay and and of course you know if if uh, sometimes kapha does come in to protect the lining so if there is a extra a lot of acidity then the kapha may be uh, coming in to protect the lining would you not agree 
maybe yeah then that i think it is because of the undigested toxins in the body that may manifest uh, ama if lot of ama is there in the stomach in the in the amasya it can show up in the throat it can show up in the uh, esophagus too because um, uh, this is just a one tube it is a passage so if it is if it is lot of ama or maybe kapha increasing if the if the client is in kapha constitution and if he takes lot of uh, 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 kapha provoking food that can also lead to, lead to this clearing of the throat so first we need to know the constitution of the client what kind of food he is taking and his digestive power digestive uh, uh, then uh, maybe these are the chances and then we have another question from a listener what can ayurveda offer for chest pain controlled angina angina chest pain actually um, first we need to find the pathology first where, where, what is the cause chest pain in even in uh, impaired digestion it can manifest as chest pain even the heart disease there can we can uh, the chest pain is it is a it is a just a sign for uh, we have to find the what is the real cause behind the chest pain excellent and if once you do know the cause and if you are getting it treated by a professional then there are definitely things that we can do to strengthen the heart we yeah, can if it is cardiac origin means uh, we need uh, we can support we have some supporting herbs cardiac supporting herbs then you need to go for the regular cardiologist and do all the checkups routine checkups and we can we can also give some supporting herbs right we and we and the breath work pranayam we, uh, there are some beautiful breath uh, pranayam techniques that can strengthen the heart um yeah. so definitely and i know the listener to be a yoga teacher so very gentle restorative yoga postures we also have ritbastis that are very good for the heart and yeah. also as you mentioned dr ini uh, some heart specific herbs uh, would be very very beneficial oh some of the clients uh, when they practice yoga they could uh, they could avoid uh, bp medicines when we were in india right if they practice yoga and pranayama gradually uh, they can gradually they stop the use of uh, blood pressure medicines and all we saw in our clinical practice in india but that should be under the uh, they have to go for regular checkups and all 